I'm Dr. Jennifer Greer. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon who specializes in body contouring and breast surgery. I also do some facial aesthetics, including eye lift and facelift. But today I wanna to talk about the difference between tummy tuck and paniculectomy. The tummy area is one of those areas that changes throughout life with weight gain or weight loss, and especially with pregnancy. As a mom of three, I've seen those changes on my own body, and it's really gratifying to help women get back to their pre-baby body. Now, tummy tuck versus paniculectomy is a question I get a lot because they're actually very different surgeries. Paniculus is the Latin word for apron, and that's what we call that little overhang of skin that can happen after weight loss or pregnancy. So a paniculectomy is just removing that overhanging apron, and that's it. We don't tighten any muscles, we don't do any liposuction, nothing else. When people talk about surgery after massive weight loss in insurance coverage, this is what insurance will cover. They will cover a paniculectomy. They don't cover a tummy tuck or abdominoplasty. And there are several features that make abdominoplasty very different and give a very different postoperative result. So with paniculectomy, that overhang of skin is gone. There's an incision hip to hip, so there's a very low scar. With tummy tuck, that low scar is the same, but the difference is that I elevate the skin all the way up to the costal margin, that's your ribs, and I tighten those two six-pack muscles. They slide apart during pregnancy or weight gain, and they don't always heal all the way back together. So that's what gives us that little three-month mommy pooch when we relax our tummy, which my seven-year-old really kindly pointed out last night after dinner. So you can compensate for that muscle stretch by constantly sucking your stomach in, but without actually repairing the space between the muscles, whenever you relax, you're gonna have that little pooch come back. So repair of the rectus diastasis is done by just suturing those muscles back together, and it puts them back in a more functionally anatomic position. So it helps out with core strength, it can help with back pain, it can even help with pelvic floor issues such as stress incontinence. That's one of the key components of a tummy tuck. We also remove more skin than in a paniculectomy and do what's called an umbilical transposition. The umbilicus is the belly button and it's attached to the anterior part of the abdominal wall and it stays in place during a tummy tuck. We bring it out through a new hole in the skin, which is why there's a little scar right around the belly button and that's called an umbilical transposition. That right there is a standard abdominoplasty, skin removal, repair of the rectus muscles, umbilical transposition. But there are a couple other things I add that I think are really important to address the entire torso, 360 degrees around. So if there's any excess fat over the hips or waist, I like to perform liposuction. If we don't do that, you can end up with this really nice flat tummy and then kind of the muffin top on the hips, which is not a look we're going for. So in most of my patients, I will do liposuction of the hips or waist along with abdominoplasty. And then the last area that's really important to address is the mons pubis. The mons is the pubic area. That's where the pubic hair is. And that area drops a little with pregnancy and aging. And it also can get a little extra fat, which can make it look kind of puffy if you don't address that at the time of a tummy tuck. So if you've ever heard people talking about the fupa, that's what that is. And if you have had a lot of weight gain or weight loss, or had a tummy tuck with a surgeon who did not address the mons, then you can end up with a fupa, which is not, again, the look we're going for. It can make it difficult to feel comfortable in yoga pants or anything more slim fitting, like a lot of the um, skinny leg pants that we have right now. Fortunately, it's very easy to address. And when I'm doing a tummy tuck, I will often do a combination of liposuction and skin excision over the mons. And that skin excision really means I'm just making that incision lower so that the mons gets lifted up when we do the abdominoplasty. If you've had a tummy tuck without this addressed or just have a little extra fluff in that area, it's very easy to address with either liposuction or cool sculpting. Pretty simple outpatient procedure. So those are the main differences between tummy tuck and paniculectomy. Paniculectomy is just skin excision. And a tummy tuck in my hands addresses the entire torso, 360 degrees around. It repairs the stretch muscles. It addresses any little extra fluff over the mons. And it takes off more skin to transpose the belly button and leave a nice cute perky belly button because so many of us have that sad little overhang after having kids. I hope that answers your questions, and if you have any more questions, be sure to leave them in the comments.